Alrighty. This is the second page of, of the handout regarding partial derivatives. We're going to look at estimating derivatives, uh, look at their interpretations and things like that. And you're going to see that it's not much different than what we already know. So in order to complete this problem, estimating f sub x at 1, 3 and f sub y at 1, 3, knowing f of x is, was in the previous page. So f of x, y here is 16 minus x squared minus y squared. We have to remember something from calculus 1 and apply it here to make it a lot easier on us. So if I talk about remembering, this is what we want to remember, that we can estimate f prime at a particular value of x by using the difference quotient f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Hopefully you remember that. And normally if we have an equation for if we have an equation for f, we use a small h to give a value estimate for the derivative at a point. And we usually let a small h be 0 0.001. It seems to be a sufficient size in order for us to get a reasonable estimate. So we're going to utilize this difference quotient for partial derivatives to, first of all, help you understand that this is all brand new and to utilize something you know so it doesn't become quite so difficult to remember things. So in general, if I want to estimate f sub x at any point I want, I'm going to use the difference quotient. So I'm going to do f of x plus h. The problem is now is that I have this extra y value. So I'm just going to put it in there. So f of x plus h comma y minus f of x y divided by h. So very similar. I just have that extra y in there. <clears throat> and then if I want to do f sub y, you probably can guess this one. It's f of x comma y plus h. Now y is the one that's moving around minus f of x y all over h. So the idea of just looking in one direction actually changes the three dimensional shape into two dimensions. And then we just add the extra dimension there because we are moving up and down. And that value makes a difference. So this is how we go about estimating partial derivatives given a function and an ordered pair. So now let's actually do the work. Now I'm going to let h equals 0.001. And I'm going to do f sub x at 1, 3. Move it up just a little bit so I don't start running off the paper. So that's going to be approximately equal to. Now, notice I have a value for h, I have a value for x, and I have a value for y. So all I have to do is plug things in, and it should work out fine. So it's going to be f of 1 plus 0 0.001, comma, 3, minus f of 1 comma 3 divided by h, 0 0.001. Now this next step, uh, you probably don't need to do, but I'm going to do it just for emphasis. I'm going to add 1 plus 0 0.001. And then I have that ordered pair I'm going to stick into my original f. And then I have this ordered pair I'm going to stick into my original f. And then in the end, I divide by my h value, and it gives me a good estimate. So let me get out my trusted calculator. Can't seem to quite get rid of that shadow on that side. Well, I guess I'll just move this up and put the calculator down here. So I'm going to do this all in one pop. Remember that our function is 16 minus x squared my x is 1.001 .001 in the first part, minus 3 squared. And then I have to subtract from that 16 minus 1 squared, minus 3 squared. And then I have to divide by 0 0.001. Now I like to do it on one pop. So notice that I have that parenthesis and that parenthesis, which puts parentheses mm -hmm. around the whole top. And then I have the first number here calculated into my function, so 16 minus 0 1.001 squared minus 3 squared, etc., all in the numerator, and then I divide by 0 0.001, and I hit enter, and I get minus 2.001.
Now you can do it in pieces. I don't care how you do it, but you're supposed to be getting negative 2.001. So make sure you can do that yourself. Negative 2.001. So it looks like the slope in the x direction of my tangent line is negative 2.001 approximately. All right. Now let's do the same thing for the y. So I'm going to let h be the same. So f sub y at 1, 3 <clears throat> is approximately equal to f of 1. Now I'm going to follow this. So I've got to put 1 in here, and then I have to add the h to the 3. So 3 plus 0 0.001 minus f of 1, 3. That stays the same. Divided by 0 0.001. Again, I'm going to take that middle step that actually adds those numbers. Minus f of 1, 3 divided by 0 0.001. Now let's do the math for that number. Now, because I did the math of the previous one, I can actually do second enter and just make some changes here. So uh, I can delete out that. But I'm going to add the point zero zero one in here. Whoops. Do, do, do. Let's get rid of that. So I've got 16 minus 1 squared minus 3.001 squared. And then minus 16 minus 1 squared. Okay, so that's the function at 1, 3. And then I divide by 0 0.001. Let's see if I did it. Yep. So I get negative 6.001. All right, so remember when we first did the problem on the first page, we did mention that uh, both slopes are negative, and our estimations actually came out with both slopes being negative. So that's probably we're on the right track. So that's pretty good. Let's see. Let's try problem number two down here. Oh, yeah. Any questions, make sure you ask them in class. All right, so now let's go down to problem number two. Now we have this situation where f is a function of m and r. Now let's see what all these things mean. m is the mass of an object in kilograms. That's a distance r in meters from the center of the Earth. And f is the gravitational force on the object in newtons. So now we're going to do some interpretation. We're going to give the units of measure for the partial of f with respect to r, the partial of f with respect to m. Now, again, if you remember from Calc 1, if I have my dx dt or dy dt, I know that if I want the units of measure for that, I take the units of measure for y. If I have dy dt, I take the units of measure for y and put them over the units of measure for t, and that's my units of measure for dy dt. Nothing changes here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the units for each of these three letters, f, r, and m. And I'm just going to take note. So f is the gravitational force on the object in Newton. So f is Newton's. r is a distance in meters from the center of the Earth. And m is mass in kilograms. All right. So when I want to do the units for the partial of f with respect to r, I put the units for F in the top and the units for R in the bottom. And there's my units of measure, Newton's meters. That's as easy as it is. Now, if I'm going to do the partial of F with respect to M, the units of measure for F is N, Newtons, and the units of measure for M is kilograms. So that's Newtons per kilogram. Okay, it's the same thing as it was in Calculus 1. So not too challenging. Now we're going to conjecture. Hopefully you know what the word conjecture means. It actually means an educated guess. So we're going to conjecture the signs of the partial of f with respect to r and the partial of f with respect to m for a person with a mass of 70 kilograms that's sitting on the surface of the earth. Okay, so that means that um, m is 70, and we're going to increase it from there, and r is 0, and we're going to increase it from there. And f is still newtons. So if I think about the partial of f with respect to r, and I think about its sign, s-i-g-n, I think, okay, I'm going to increase r. 
I'm going to leave the mass fixed at 70. I'm going to increase R. So here I am on the surface of the Earth, my 70 kilograms in me, and I start increasing my distance from the surface of the Earth. Now what I want to think about then is how the Newtons uh, and the gravitational force changes. So we know from physics that if I'm standing on the surface of the Earth and I move away from the Earth, the gravitational force actually weakens. So I think about the partial of F with respect to R as R increases the gravitational force decreases. So that means that if I have a decreasing derivative or a decreasing behavior, that means my derivative will be negative. So as the independent variable increases and the dependent variable decreases, I have a negative derivative. So in the same manner, partial of F with respect to M I'm going to now stay on the surface of the Earth, but I'm going to grow my mass. <laughs> I don't know how else to draw it. Go from 70 to 80 to 90, whatever, it's going to grow. So I have to think, okay, as my dependent variable increases, what happens to the gravitational force? Well, the gravitational force actually increases according to physics. So that means as M increases, gravitational force increases. So my partial of F with respect to M it's got to be greater than zero. Okay, I hope I'm not talking too loud. I'm sorry if I am. Now, it says here, interpret partial derivatives in terms of gravitational force. So, basically, you're just going to write in a sentence what you think the interpretation of the partial of F with respect to R is and the partial of F with respect to M. So, here I would say, if I want to interpret it, I would say gravitational force decreases as the distance from the center of the Earth increases. You can also say the change of gravitational force with respect to change in uh, R is distance, yeah. So, in a similar fashion or a slightly different fashion, I can describe the partial of F with respect to M as the change in gravitational force with respect to mass. I guess I should say change in mass. Everything's changing here. That's what a derivative is. So these are two different ways you can kind of interpret a rate of change. Always use the word change when you're talking about derivatives. Here you can say the rate of change in gravitational force with respect to mass. Anything like that would work as well. So let's write that down. Rate of change or rate of change of gravity with respect to mass. So there's three different ways that you can interpret it. You can interpret it in terms of its sign, interpret it as one change over another change, and interpret it as a rate of change. All works pretty well. I think it depends on the problem.